Today, the battle continues as the biggest, most powerful and famous monster trucks in the world return to television in their first national side-by-side -side competition. You'll feel the power of these heavy metal monster machines. This is Return of the Monster Trucks. trucks, trucks, trucks. Join Claude Aiken, Jan Gabriel, and a host of the most incredible monster trucks ever assembled as they pound the ground, pursuing their greatest challenge yet. You'll see them toughing it out on both land and water. It all comes to you from the Louisiana Superdome in New Orleans. is the party capital of the world. And every year, an estimated six million people spend two billion dollars right here in New Orleans. They come here to participate in the world's wildest, splashiest, non-stop celebrations. During Mardi Gras alone, there are 63 separate parades with legendary kings, queens, gods, and heroes throwing gold coins and beads. After dark, the pleasure seekers take over Bourbon Street to consume everything from hot dogs to crawfish and Cajun stew. Washed down by rivers of daiquiris, hurricanes, French wine, and 400,000 and cases of beer a night. It's an all-out binge that includes the finest hot jazz in the world. There are 1,200 night spots in the French Quarter that includes Bourbon Street, where fun and excitement never stop. And it's customary to party all night long until the darkness turns to daylight. And when the curtain finally descends and the carnival's over, the focus shifts to the other side of town, where you'll find the Louisiana Superdome. And for the first time ever, we're going to see the world's most famous monster trucks in side-by-side -side competition. They've built a most unusual obstacle course inside the Superdome. I'm Jan Gabriel, inviting you to a monstrously exciting afternoon. Good afternoon and welcome. It was just about a year ago that we brought you the first television special, The Battle of the Monster Trucks, a program so popular that we've been asked to return with more monster trucks. And what a pleasure to return with my co-host, the star of many movies and television shows, Mr. Claude Akins. Thank you, Jen. Last year on Battle of the Monster Trucks, you saw a variety of specialty vehicles, pulling trucks, wheelie trucks, even funny cars. But today, it's exclusively monster trucks you'll see the first national competition with eight of the most outstanding trucks in America. In addition, you'll see other monster trucks from all across the United States. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is this phenomenon about monster trucks? Particularly when you consider there are millions of spectators crowding into domes, just like the Superdome here in New Orleans. Well, I can't explain the phenomenon, but I can tell you this. They're all American-made, they're colorful, they're exciting, and most of all, they're very powerful. And the action will be spectacular as these these vehicles race each other side by side in competition. So let's take a look at them right now. The eight trucks competing here today are the most popular in the country, and that includes this yellow monster, Frankenstein. It'll be driven today by Barry Wentz from Mulvane, Kansas. When you talk about famous, here's a monster that's high on the list. Everett Zasmer from Spring Lake Park, Minnesota, drives this patriotic USA number one, and Everett has a great chance of winning here today. Now this is certainly not a truck, but it does fall in the category of monster, with the same chassis configuration and setup as the trucks. It sports a Camaro body and is driven by Kirk Dabney of Fayetteville, North Carolina. It gets real cold in the state of Michigan in the winter months, where they created the Michigan Ice Monster. It'll drive through anything. It's driven by Brett Engelman from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay, Jen? Another unusual monster truck entered in the competition here this afternoon is Roland Thunder. What makes it unusual is it's a van, and it's powered by a diesel engine. It's driven by Jim Oldager out of Redondo Beach, California. Now here is the king of the Kongs, Awesome Kong 2, driven by Jeff Dane out of Killeen, Texas. Now what makes this monster so awesome 
is that the motor sits in the back bed of the truck and that motor is no less than an Allison aircraft engine. It's all power. Dan? Always a highlight in any monster truck show is this incredible flip-top monster vet. It's an exciting vehicle and you'll want to keep your eye on it this afternoon in the competition. It's driven by Cliff Starbird from Mulvane, Kansas. Our final competitor is the most famous monster truck of all, the first to be built and the first to achieve stardom. This is Bigfoot, driven by Jim Kramer. Well, there you have it, eight of the most unique monster trucks you'll see anywhere. And they're ready to compete on a very unusual closed course inside the Louisiana Superdome. And right now, let's go inside to our colleague, Steve Evans. Thank you, Jan. You mentioned the name Bob Chandler earlier. Well, this is the very same man. The father of Bigfoot, and in many ways, the father of the monster truck madness we'll be seeing today. But, Bob, how do the drivers feel about this first-time head-to-head competition before it's been kind of exhibition only? It's been exhibition. This first competition is going to be really different for everybody concerned here. None of these guys have ever done this. You know, we've done some exhibition with uh, one or two vehicles. Now they've got eight vehicles head-to-head. -head. They've got car crushing. They've got mud running. They've got to pull a sled. It's going to be unique. Are the drivers a little more nervous than usual? Oh, definitely. Definitely, definitely. You see them all out here on the course checking every inch of it, don't you? <laughs> you know, and Jan, what do you put on the floor of the Superdome to try to stop vehicles that are capable of crushing the Baja? Well, thanks to Bob Chandler and another little foot, Bigfoot, we had a chance to look at the course earlier. Come along for a ride. So you're going to go down, I understand, about 100 feet and then come to a stop with the sled. 100 feet, that's where they'll be right down to here. Then they'll stop. Their man will unhook them. As soon as they unhook, they're back off again. Okay, now we don't have that sled to hold us back. Yeah, now we can go around and we got to go over this one hill. This is where they'll actually crisscross here. We're going up that? Yes. Looks more like a brick wall than a hill. Whoa! Oh, there's the dome of the Super Dome. Right, good view of the dome. Now we got to do a little, little crushing here. What, well, these cars are already crushed? Well, they'll have new metal in it for the trucks tonight. This little Aerostar with me in it. I've done a lot of crazy things, folks, but this takes the cake. Okay. Now, these guys will race all the way over and head for the mud, but I don't think we're going to go into mud tonight. That's something, isn't it? I finally got the circulation back in my knuckles. And, Bob, we took a lot of shortcuts out there. It's really tougher for the actual uh, monster trucks. Oh, yeah, it's much worse than we did. We took shortcut on a sled and a few other things, but uh, it's an interesting course. Well, thanks for a good view of the uh, dome in the Superdome. That's about all I saw over that first jump. Jan, back to you guys. Well, thank you, Steve Evans. Claude Aikens, we've got everything. There'll be a sled involved, a tight turn involved. There'll be little hoopty doos and hills, crushing cars. Crushing the cars, and I tell you, it's starting to fill up here at the Superdome. The people are here, the excitement is in the air. Bigfoot, of course, is ready to take on all his competition. And I think we're gonna have a great race. Let's take a look, first of all, at Roland Thunder. Roland Thunder, as far as we know, is the first monster van to show up here in the United States. It's driven by Jim Oldacre out of Redondo Beach, California, a young man who lives on a sailboat when he's not out with his monster truck. After putting about 100,000 miles on this van, now it doesn't look like it has that much on it, when it was just a stock old van, he put 100,000 miles on this machine, Claude, and didn't have the heart to jump the thing. He just decided that he was gonna monsterize it. You can see the result, it looks terrific. He certainly monsterized it. Well, it's a 1972 Dodge powered by a Detroit diesel. It stands 12 feet high in the air, and uh, most of these vehicles, as this one does, have 66-inch uh, tires. The problem with Roland Thunder is, is that it's a one-piece van, and it's built uh, a little stiffer than other trucks in the center. Matter of fact, uh, we asked Jim Oldacre about that earlier. Here's what he had to say. Well, it, is, uh, it has two separate frames. The, the body is spring-mounted on, on the, the big truck frame that I built for it, so that doesn't cause a problem. If it was, it was directly mounted to it, it would tear the body apart. That was Jim Oldacre. He's ready to go, and let's take a look at the Michigan Ice Monster. All right, here is the madman from Michigan, Brett Engelman from Grand Rapids, driving the Michigan Ice Monster. And Brett's ready to make thunder here this afternoon. He told us earlier what it's going to take to win. There's a high possibility of breakage in any one of the events we're going to do today. Um, hopefully, with enough horsepower, we can keep the truck together. All right. 
side. They're on their way, side by side. Let's watch it now to the Michigan Ice Monster. Looks Claude is always ahead just a little bit. Here comes Roland Thunder now. He bolts into the lead. Roll and Thunder. Now, here's what they're doing. They're pulling that 40,000-pound weighted sled. They are unhooking right now. The first guy to unhook and get back underway will be the leader. Looks like Roll and Thunder. A little bit in the lead. Roll and Thunder is away. Oh, look out. Michigan Ice Monster now on the way back. Putting him to the test. Now, here's where they'll cross over. Watch them carefully. They'll cross over. You can see Roland Thunder goes to the inside. Michigan Ice Monster goes to the outside. Here they are up over the first hill now. And here comes the old monster from Michigan. He's taking a run at that same hill, and up he goes. Watch him now as they go to the cars. Rolling Thunder, go. up first. Here comes Michigan Ice Monster. Michigan Ice Monster's coming in, and here he goes, up over the first car. Oh, Claude, we've got... The windshield's dragging, and the hood's caving in. And we've got the uh, Rolling Thunder. He's in a lot of trouble. He got off the cars. He's trying to get back on. You've got to stay right. on the cars. There's a bit of an edge now for the old Michigan Ice Monster. They look as if they're nose to nose now, don't they? You bet they a are. Now through the, the mud. Ice Monster. Now through the mud. mud step. To the finish. It's going to be the Michigan I Ice Monster. I think it is. I think he's done it. Brad yes, Engelman. he is. There he is. Brad Engelman from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Put it through a tough test and came in the winner. Well, there's certainly no question about it. The fans absolutely love this monster truck competition. And coming up in the next round of the quarterfinals will be this awesome machine, Blue Thunder, taking on the incredible Awesome Kong 2. But first, let's go to Steve Evans. Steve? Well, Brett, you certainly broke the ice tonight. The first ever side-by-side -side monster truck race, and you won this heat. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, it looked like you were in trouble when Roland Thunder had about a three-car length lead and then slid off the side of those cars. I was a little worried about it, but... Uh... No, I kept the composure and the speed up. I thought I could catch him. I seen him. He messed up on the cars a little bit. And I thought, there's my chance, baby. Put it to the wood. So you were watching what he was doing as well as trying to do your own. Looking out of the corner of my eye, see what was going on. I, I don't know what happened. We got, it took a long time to get unhooked at the sled. And then we uh, started to get her going again. Still in the quarterfinals of the Monster Trucks. The Monster Truck Showdown. Two beauties coming out right now. First of all, Claude Aikens, let's talk about big old awesome Kong. Oh, there it is, that awesome Kong 2. Now, this has got to be one of the most tricked out trucks that you'll ever see. You're looking at awesome Kong 2, created and driven by 28-year-old Jeff Dane of Colleen, Texas, by way of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's a blend of heavy-duty truck, industrial crane, and an airplane. The engine sits in the back bed and was originally the power plant of a World War II P-51 Mustang fighter plane. This Allison aircraft engine puts out over 3,000 horsepower. And Jeff Dane is here to accomplish two things, put on a good show and to win. Well, it's very important that I win here today because reputations are at stake and they've been going on for a long time. And the way I'm going to win is I'm just going to give it all she's got today right here and you're going to see it. Well, that's a word from Jeff Dane, and he'll be taking on Blue Thunder. Blue Thunder is uh, the largest Camaro in the world. It was the first monster car built. Blue Thunder is the creation of the Dabney brothers, Kirk and Kevin. Kirk will be doing the driving. He's out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, and I'll tell you, he can explain this vehicle a lot better than I can. The steering out of it is also unusual. That it, The joystick that's in it, as you would call it, is out of a Huey 30 helicopter. And the five major functions in the car are controlled on this control stick as well as the, the turning of the front and rear tires, the opening of the hood, the nitrous, and uh, the starting and stopping of the motor. It just makes for a, a hard to get used to, but a quick setup. If you can get the stick right, you will go faster than most everybody here. All right, you've heard from both the drivers. We're ready to go now, Claude Aikens. Winner of this goes into the semi-round of the Monster Trucks. Now we can see they're just hooking up now. They're getting ready for the big sled pull. Kirk Tightening up the chains, looks as if your Blue Thunder is about ready. Kirk Dabney doing the driving in Blue Thunder. They're away. All right, and here we go. It looks as if old Jeff just got the jump on him a little bit. He's out in front. Now they've got on hook, right? Exactly. Jeff Dane way out in front. They look side by side right now, but Dane's got the advantage. He'll unhook first, and he'll be away All first. All right, and he is on the move. The Kong 2 is coming around into the first the first hurdle and up he goes watch him now very carefully blasting away look at this all right he's got a little bit of edge over blue thunder blue thunder is now making his first leap 
The Kong is over the first set of cars. There he goes. Blue Thunder a little out of shape. I don't know if that control stick has hurt him or not, but look at him. Uh, just pulverized those oh, cars. Oh, here we go. Gaining a little time. They're coming oh, in. he's trying it. to make up time. That's look at right. this. He's got to gain a little bit. Here we're into the mud. Oh, and it, He's almost going to pull it off. Off the close there. Off the close. Woo! Awesome Kong. Awesome <laughs> Kong, the winner. And not by much, I tell you. Let's go to Steve Evans with our winner, Steve. Well, no question about that one. Jeff Dane, a clear-cut winner. Uh, but it looked like it started to slide off the cars there. That, that first lane is really tilting to the left side. I think uh, if I get a lane choice again, I'm going on the other side. So you think there is an imbalance in the lanes because of the car stacking or what? Yeah, I sure do. Everybody who ran this uh, first lane has tipped off to the side. So the cars are really hard to stay on, and I think that's going to be the deciding factor between these lanes. Otherwise, it's pretty stiff competition. You're looking at a one-of-a-kind monster vet and USA One driven by Everett Jasmer. And Claude Akins, I know you had a chance to talk with Everett earlier today. Now you want to talk about something famous, you want to talk about something original. We are standing in front of a famous original. USA number one. And the creator of this original is kind of original himself, Everett Jasmer from Spring Lake Park, Minnesota. How did this all come about? Well, it all started a few years ago when a bunch of us guys with four-wheel drive trucks decided to get a little crazy with them, build them bigger and bigger and bigger, and pretty soon the public wanted to see them, and so, uh, so now right. we're in show business. Now, you, <laughs> you have nothing to go to as far as plans or designs. Where do you get the parts for these, the actual adjustments and all that stuff? Everything about them is custom-built. Each uh, individual owner has built them himself. We take big, heavy-duty military parts and other components, and a lot of steel, and fabricate everything ourselves, uh, take the heavy components, modify them to fit. Uh, a lot of stuff is custom built from scratch. It'd be a little tough to change tires on the freeway, wouldn't it? It would be real tough. I like uh, race cars and things like that all have sponsors and people that help out. Do you guys have people that contribute to you uh, for the promotion of this? Well, up until very recently, there's been very little other than product sponsorship. Different manufacturers of the product we use giving us, like shock absorbers and things like that. This year now, we've seen a little bit of a change in the industry. It's becoming a lot more professional, and uh, we've got people like True Value to thank for their backing in everything we do, and I think we're going to see more and more of it as time goes on. All right. Well, we want to wish you a lot of luck. Thank you. Thank you, Everett. Look at this. Here is Cliff Starbird and the Monster Vet. This is one of the real showpieces of the 80s. From Mulvane, Kansas, 28-year-old Cliff Starbird has brought his classic Monster Vet here. Now, the only real downside to the Monster Vet is the fact that the wheelbase is a little on the short side, making the vehicle harder to manage as it crushes cars. But I think he's got a solution. Cliff Starbird. Well, the biggest problem with the lightweight and the shorter wheelbase is it gives a lot more hopping action and a lot more bouncing. So if I can keep it on the cars, which uh, I think I'll do this time, you're going to see a lot better show than last time. The hardest part is just keeping on the cars. I got plenty of horsepower, just a matter of keeping it on the cars. This is the incredible flip top monster truck of Everett Jasmer from Spring Lake Park, Minnesota, the USA number one. He built it during one of those cold Minnesota winters. It's a 1970 half ton Chevy pickup. We asked uh, Everett to tell us the worst thing that had ever happened to his baby, the USA number one. Worst I can remember was just recently. I broke four axles, one touch of the throttle crushing cars. I think we got all that repaired, and today we're going to go out there and hopefully win this race. That was a calm, cool, and collected effort, Jasmer, as he gets ready to put the power to USA One. This is one of the most colorful matchups as you're looking at two of the most famous monster vehicles in the world. They're underway, and Jasmer literally bolts into the lead, leaving Starbird at the gate. Jasmer jumps on the brakes with the 40,000 pound weighted sled in tow. They'll unhook him now, and he'll have a hot lead over the monster vet. He's making the move out, so he's going to come in with a good two car lengths ahead of the monster vet. It's a comfortable lead all right as USA One begins to line up for his charge over this mini Mount St. Helens here. Monster vet is now making the run it is. Monster vet trying to play catch up here but he's in trouble. That's right that's right he, I don't know if he can make it. Monster vet's catching up. He's catching up and he's taking him. He certainly is. Cliff Starbird, the Monster Vet, has now gone into the lead. USA One is now going to have to play catch up. USA One had a little trouble over those cars. He's going into the mud pit place, and 
Monsterman is out first. This is an upset as 28-year-old Cliff Starbird with a short wheel base automobile has beaten Everett Jasper in the USA 1. Cliff Starbird. Looks as if Everett had some problem getting over his cars there. It looks as if he got hung up or something or that monster bed just went through his so fast. I thought he was going to jump the whole bunch. Well, it was Cliff Starbird who said if he could stay on the cars, he could win, and he did. Now, as we get ready for the next heavyweight match, let's go to Steve Evans. Cliff, you kept your cool when it all looked lost. <laughs> that sled's just a little heavy. I'm so light, and uh, I'm just not set full sled. That's my biggest handicap. I know if I get past that, I'd give him a good show. Here is the truck that everyone has been waiting for, the most famous monster truck in the world. This is the original, built back in 1974. This is Bigfoot, created by the mechanical genius Bob Chandler. Entrusted to do the driving today is Jim Kramer from St. Louis, Missouri. We talked to him earlier. We have a good name to try to uphold, and, and it's getting harder to do every day when we run against a, a field of competition like we have here. We always go out and try to do our best. We feel we have the best engineered truck on the market, and uh, we just try to do our best in, in everything we do. Well, that's Bigfoot, and he takes on this vehicle ready to go. It's truly one of the most unique trucks in the USA today. This is the hot yellow Frankenstein. We asked Barry Wentz, uh, the driver, what he thought Frankenstein's chances were here this afternoon. We're going to plan on doing very well today. We took the six-cylinder out and put a V8 in it, and uh, we have a shorter wheelbase, but we still think we're going to do very well. Let's watch them, Claude Aikens. All right, they're just pulling out, and they're tightening, and here we go, and it looks as if... Bigfoot stepped off to a big lead. Sure did. Bigfoot way in the lead. He'll stop now. They'll pull a pin on that machine. Here's Frankenstein now snugging up next to Bigfoot. Bigfoot is back underway. Look at and Jimmy Kramer go. Got a big jump on, on Frankenstein. He is really, really, really moving that. He's coming into his first dirt pack now, and he must be at least four lengths ahead of Frankenstein. Bigfoot. Up and ready now to crush cars. Look at Bigfoot now, and thundering down, mashing those cars. He not only drove on it, he jumped on it. Now he's coming into the mud pit. Frankenstein in trouble. Frankenstein off the cars, as you can see. And here's Bigfoot down in the mud, deep in the mud. Bigfoot's going to win big. Jimmy Kramer and Bigfoot. Whoa, your winner. <laughs> There he is, the wheels hit the ground. Look at Frankenstein struggling over there. He hasn't even hit the mud pit yet. Here he goes now. Barry Wentz dumping it down into the mud, and I mean, he hit hard. Steve Evans is with Jim Kramer right now. Well, Jim, you made that one look almost too easy. Oh, it's never easy. Uh, you get out there and try to do your best. I saw that I had a little bit of advantage in the pool, and I just kind of backed off it, and I had a station wagon there, which was a little bit more difficult, and I took a little more time on the station wagon than I normally would, and it seemed to work out pretty good. Well, the original eight monster trucks have now been reduced to four for the semifinals coming up in just a couple of minutes. But first, let's take a look at some mini monsters. We're back on the return of the Monster Trucks. I'm Jan Gabriel along with Claude Aikens, and you're looking at Brett Engelman's Michigan Ice Monster. And you can bet he's getting ready to heat up the action here in the semifinals in the Louisiana Superdome. He'll take on Awesome Kong 2, driven by Jeff Dane. Jeff Dane, a creative young man, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, he's a hero in his own hometown of Colleen, Texas. Being a hero in your hometown is never easy. Here's the way it went down for me. 
I saw a thief with a gun jump into a car right in front of me. As he sped off, I knew there was something wrong. I jumped into my monster truck, just like any normal person would do, and gave chase. Help! I'm in run! Stop him! The screams I had heard confirmed my suspicion. I had to stop him. I could see him up ahead. He pulled into a mobile home park. I had my eyes on him all the time from a distance. I could see he was slowing down, about to pull in front of one of those mobile homes. I prayed he was alone. I had to think of something real fast. I didn't have a gun, but I did have Awesome Kong, one of the best monster trucks in the country. Finally I saw him. He smashed out a window. He took a shot at me. I knew then I was helpless. Khan would have to do the work, and he did. The destruction was awesome. I knew the thief was either dead or real shook up. I yelled to him, come out and surrender or Khan would attack again. Lucky for him, he chose to surrender. You know, being a hero is tough work. And with the ringing of gunshots still in my ears, I soon realized after all, it was only a dream. Here's Jeff Dane, and this is no dream. He's in the semifinals here in the Louisiana Superdome. And uh, right alongside of him, dripping with the icicle window graphics, is our old Michigan buddy, the Michigan Ice Monster. Let's watch him carefully now. They're away. Again, it's Awesome Kong jumping out into the lane, doing a nice job. He now slams the brakes on the machine. Here's the Michigan Ice Monster catching up now. On Jeff Dane's Awesome Kong, they have pulled the pin, and he's away in fine fashion. Good, healthy lead. Big gap between the two. Michigan Ice Monster having trouble getting away. Here comes Jeff Dane. Watch him over the hill. Front end raises way up. Michigan Ice Monster underway. Yes, he's got a lot to make up. I think he's almost a half a lap behind. The Kong is now going over the cars, and the Ice Monster just now hitting his first barrier. Yeah, he's backing up a little bit. Wants to make sure he can get up smoothly rather than smashing into it. He does so, but here's Kong already in the mud, and awesome Kong. Jeff Dane will go into the finals here at the Superdome. And he's doing a big 180 for you just to show you what he can do. There's certainly no question the fans love this monster truck showdown. And Claude, I know that you've talked to the man who makes these shows possible, the president of the United States Hot Rod Association, Bob George. Guy who originated this big monster truck thing is right here. Bob, tell us, how did you ever think this would work in stadiums and how did it all come about? Well, there were people with monster trucks before me, but they were just called big four-wheel drive machines, doing odd things like proving they could steer with all four wheels, crushing some cars, and we decided with the U.S. Hot Rod Association to make a competition out of it. So now we got the Crunch Bunch, the Kings of Crunch, whatever you care to call them, the big bad and blown monster trucks, and we've got an actual side-by-side -side competition, and it should be darn exciting. I we think hope it's so. going to be that sled by sled, that side by side. I think it's going to be a great race tonight. And we thank you for all your help and for all this wonderful stuff that's going on. It couldn't have happened without you. Thank you so much. Here's Cliff Starbird riding high in the monster bet. And he knows if he wins this round, he'll be in the finals. But he'll have to be Bigfoot, the most famous truck of all. And where did Bigfoot come from? Well, we went to find out. It was here in 1976 that Bob Chandler invented and developed the first monster truck, now known throughout the world as Bigfoot. It was from these humble beginnings in this small shop just outside of St. Louis, Missouri, that grew the hottest new motorsports phenomenon to hit America in years. But that's history. Today, the shop is in a new location with over 23,000 square feet of retail space. And that includes 18 huge working bays for everything from building monster trucks to the repairing of all types of four-wheel drive vehicles. And the man responsible for all that, indeed, is Bob Chandler. Ten years ago, you couldn't imagine all this was going to happen.
I had no idea, Jan. It started as a hobby. I had no idea this would, this would come out of it. Let's go back to that little small shop there that we saw in the beginning. What would you have, about three uh, little working areas? I had three bays. One of them was our long-term bay. It was between the other two. So we had two doors to get in the building, and the center job was usually Bigfoot's because it was always in there for long periods of time working on it. Four-wheel drive has really become a phenomenon in the country. I don't mean just the monster trucks, but there are people uh, racing in the deserts and uh, even see them on the streets with big wheels on them. Uh, ten years ago, uh, how big was four-wheel drive? In St. Louis, I think there was three trucks, and one of them was mine ten years ago. That's where I started, and uh, I opened up a four-wheel drive shop, Midwest Four-Wheel Drive Center. And I started putting every product that I could on it, showing off what could be done with a four-wheel drive vehicle, and it started to become a sport in this area. And then I had a lot of the business really picked up after that. Bigfoot is certainly one of those vehicles that's loved not only by adults but children as well. And uh, there's a cartoon series. Yeah, it's on Sunday morning. It's called Bigfoot and the uh, Muscle Machines. Of course, it features Bigfoot and uh, Paul Ewing, uh, Black Gold. That's a pulling truck. Right. Mm -hmm. And Orange Blossom, which does the wheel stand, and uh, Warlord. A little funny car. Right. And it's a good guy, bad guy type cartoon. We're going to show you some footage here that has not been seen before. Uh, can you kind of explain this for us? This was filmed at the Gravelrama this year, and they've got a hill called the uh, Big Eliminator, which nobody's supposed to make up. And uh, it's 70 degree angle, and it's a 270 feet high, and it's pea gravel. Now you look like you're all over the place going back and forth here. I had a hard time climbing this hill. There was 500 Jeeps on it before I was on it, and they had rutted the middle of it out. Well, my truck's so wide, I was fighting going from one side to the other, and I had it one time, I had it up on one tire. I didn't make it, but one of these years I'm going to make it. All right, that's the hill climb footage. Now let's take a look at something else that I find fascinating, and that's wheelies. Tell us a little bit about this. Uh, well, we hook up to a 50,000-pound sled, and we hook our hitch right so we can pull the sled. We pull a sled all the way down. The guy can't stop us with a sled, but we set it so the truck at the other end of the track starts doing wheel stands, and it'll go down part of the track on two tires which to me is almost an impossibility to take 13,000, 14,000 pound vehicle into a wheel stand, but it's a lot of fun. My favorite piece of footage that Bob brought along to show us today is Bigfoot 4. And earlier this year, he took Bigfoot 4 and crushed, not cars, but monster trucks. Tell us a little bit about that. We always experiment with, with anything we can around here. We, we've, uh, anytime we put a new vehicle out, we'll do all the experimenting here before we go out in front of the public. And that was one of the things we experimented with and decided well, this is the only time we're going to do it, so. Inventor and innovator, Bob Chandler, thank you very much. Thank you, Jan. Two heavy metal machines ready to go. It'll be the Monster Vet and Bigfoot. One of them will go into the finals when we return. We're back with the semi-finals. The winner takes on Awesome Kong 2. Here's Bigfoot, clearly the favorite. And Claude Akins, what do you think the chances are for the monster vet? I wouldn't rule him out. He, he snuck in there before. He just may do a little sneaking now. Bigfoot on the inside lane. The monster vet, the awesome monster vet on the high side of the racetrack. They're away. Oh, look at Bigfoot just literally pulling away here now. Bigfoot slams on the brakes. Monster vet trying to catch up now. Monster Vet now applies the brakes. Bigfoot is away. Bigfoot is your leader. Boy, when he's got that much of a lead, he's going to be tough to be caught. He's going into his first dirt hazard now, although the Corvette is right behind him. He's coming in there close. You bet he is. Here he is again now. Monster Vet. The difference is the horsepower. Monster Vet, plenty of horsepower. He can get the job done. Blasts into the cars now. Side by side they race. Into the mud goes Bigfoot. Bigfoot is your leader. Monster Vet, one valiant effort here at the end. Let's see if he can pull it off. It will be Bigfoot, Bigfoot your winner. Made it Bigfoot. The vet tried to catch him, but he just couldn't do it. And that will bring together two of the most exciting monster trucks in America and the national championship finals coming up. Claude Akins, tell me, do you think one of these heavy trucks could float on water? Oh, sure, like a rock. <laughs> well, we're going to find out right now as we go to Cypress Gardens, Florida. Well, Jan and Claude, today's the day we'll see if indeed monster trucks can float on water. Hi everyone, I'm Cindy Wilcox coming to you from beautiful Cypress Gardens in Winter Haven, Florida, where today four giant monster trucks will attempt an incredible quarter mile drag race on water. We're in for some real excitement, but before we start, we'd like to show you a few of the pleasures we've enjoyed while visiting here at Cypress Gardens during their 50th anniversary. Like the new Aquacade 86 with its graceful synchronized swimmers and world-class athletes. Also new is Southern Ice, 
an exciting new ice skating review, and of course, the famous water ski show, and my favorite, the beautiful botanical gardens that made Cypress Gardens famous. Well, I'm off to see what the monster trucks are doing right now, but you enjoy your tour of beautiful Cypress Gardens. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed your tour of beautiful Cypress Gardens, but now to the business at hand. Can a monster truck really race on the water? Joining me today is David Spiker, owner of the trucks involved in this race. David, just how can a 13,000-pound monster truck race on water? Well, Sandy, the tires are six foot tall, a little over four foot wide. There's 16 pounds of air pressure at each tire. That's 16 pounds. I have 32 pounds of air pressure in my car, and it certainly won't race on this water. That does prove to be confusing sometimes. That's pounds per square inch, and there's a lot of square inches out there in those big tires, so they're supposed to float. There they go, all David. Right. They're off. The All-American looks like it's getting into the water wow, pretty quickly. Went, oh, I couldn't believe it. He went way down. The eagle's jumping off pretty fast. There, here, the comes, little... here comes a little one. Had a little trouble getting off the line there. That's Looks good a, though, yeah. just about the way I expected. So, is there a difficulty in the balancing that they got to control here with those tires? Well, they just have to make sure that they keep. They look forward and see which way they're headed. They got to look back and see which way the rear steering is headed. It's really a complicated situation. Well, I assume it is. What's the value of one of these trucks, David? I got a little over two hundred thousand dollars invested in each one of them. I don't believe I would take that for them. Yeah, that's a lot of money involved uh, out there on 30 feet of water right now, David. I tell you that, and I figure if I'm going to sink one of my trucks, I'm going to do it on national television. The little one really looks like it's not doing too well back there. It's really floating back. It looks like he's losing ground, doesn't it? It, it doesn't look like he's made much of a gain, but the All-American is really coming in right now very sharply. The Eagle's coming on strong, though. The All-American's probably about two truck lengths ahead. Yeah, and the, look at the Eagle, it's really blowing over to the side. He's not having nearly the control that the All-American seems to have. Well, Michael's been around for quite a while. He's uh, He's got a lot of experience, and he taught Larry everything he knows, and I think he kept left a few tricks out. The All-American's coming off strong now. He's making a dash for the finish line. I don't think it's any question who's going to win this race. No, I think he's got him. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Congratulations, All-American. All right. Michael Spiker, you did a great job there. Well, thank you for being with us, David. Well, it's my pleasure, Sandy. I'm just glad we didn't sink any. Well, we are, too. Well, gentlemen, we've proved it. Monster trucks do float. So this is Cindy Wilcox from beautiful Cypress Gardens, Florida Showplace, sending it back to you, Jan and Claude, at the Louisiana Superdome. Well, we now know that monster trucks can float on water. And here's a young man who will be floating on cloud number nine if he wins here today, Jeff Day. And this is Jim Kramer, and he's also ready to go. By the way, not all monster trucks can float on water. Two eager drivers ready to bring their heavy metal to the line for the national championship. And as they get ready, we're going to show you some of the other monster trucks that you might see around the nation.
the showdown. The big run for the big money. Awesome Kong takes on Bigfoot. Jim Kramer from St. Louis, Missouri. Sort of the all-time favorite. Jeff Dane of Colleen, Texas. Can you imagine on national television beating Bigfoot? And Bigfoot is also ready to go. The starting lights now on Amber. They're ready and they're away, side by side. Look at this, virtually together as they move down the track. The brakes now are on. Let's watch now. Very careful, very careful. Again, they're side by side. This ought to be a dandy. Kong and Bigfoot, they're crisscrossing now, nearly hitting each other. Here they are, coming up over the first hill, side by side. Look at Bigfoot now. Again, they're side by side. Quad virtually together. Look at Bigfoot, jumping up on the cars. There's where the advantage is. Parts flying from every direction. Here he is into the mud now. Awesome Kong trying to play catch up. Ladies and gentlemen, Bigfoot has done it. And Bigfoot did it again. Jim Kramer just kept his foot stuck in it all through the way. That awesome Kong gave him a, a great race, but he just couldn't quite do it. And the return of the monster trucks is now history. And here with our champion is Steve Evans. What a feeling it must have been as you made that victory lap. The crowd chanting, Bigfoot, Bigfoot. We love the fans, and thank God they love us. Uh, we try to give them what they come out here to see. A good show every time. Boy, you did that. Congratulations again. Well, Jan and Claude, tonight's kind of action may have forever changed the direction of these monster trucks. What a show. Thank you, Steve Evans. The return of the monster trucks certainly turned into the battle of the monster trucks. What an afternoon. It sure did. Got a little dirt on the wheels, a little dirt on the windshield, needs a little polishing up. But underneath all that mud, it is still the star. Bigfoot did it again. Jimmy Kramer did an outstanding job on driving Bigfoot. And of course, Jeff Dane and Awesome Kong, also a terrific job. Our thanks to all the drivers here today. Also want to thank Steve Evans and, of course, our special co-host once again, Claude Akins. Thank it's you, my friend. It's a pleasure being with you here at the Superdome. It was a great, exciting race. Some marvelous drivers, marvelous talent, marvelous imagination, and a great race. And a monstrous time. I'm Jan Gabriel thanking you for joining us. We'll see you next time on Battle of the Monster Trucks. Bye now.